Welcome to Utah State University's Invertebrate Paleontology and Paleobotany class. This is lecture 39. We'll look at a local fossil site here in Utah, the famous Green River Formation, and examine the fossil flora. We'll use these fossils to reconstruct the environment 50 million years ago during the Middle Eocene here in North America. Now the Green River Formation is exposed in the tri-state region of Utah, Wyoming, and western Colorado. The Green River Formation is a layer of thickly stacked shales and sandstones exposed throughout the canyonlands of northeastern Utah, western Colorado, as well as a region near the type section in Green River, Wyoming. Now, one of the most famous fossil sites that we have here in Utah is the Cowboy Canyon area, which is along the drainage of the White River. Here in Utah, the lower and upper portions of the formation are composed of thick sandstones. The more coarse, sandy grains reflect a more fluvial or groups of rivers, uh, while the middle shale interval are finer grained muds, and these reflect a lacustrian or lake deposits. It's in these lake deposits that we find most of the fossils. The lacustrian facies of the Green River Formation are stacked layers of thin shales, which contain an abundance of fossils. The trick in excavating them out is to dig down and then split the shale along the face to expose the hidden fossils. There's a number of public and private quarries that exist that allow you to collect fossil plants in the region. The real key to finding fossil leaves is to expose those layers which are buried in thick pages of sediment. It's a bit like a giant book that's filled with fossils on each page. The Green River Formation represents a thick lake system that existed in the area during the Middle Eocene. The southern lake, ancient lake, is called Lake Uinta, while the northern lake is called Lake Goshute. Near the severe thrust of western Wyoming was a separate lake that's not depicted on this map that may have been isolated from other lakes, and that's called Fossil Lake. These lakes were never very deep, and they're not as big as the Great Lakes that exist today in the northeastern part of the United States, up near Canada. And they're about a tenth of the size of the Black Sea in Eurasia. So they're a moderately large lake system, but there are many larger lake systems of the world today. Now the lake system is much, much older than the Pleistocene Lake Bonneville, uh, which was an expansion of, of the Great Salt Lake in western Utah during the Ice Ages. Now today the region is divided up into a number of basins surrounded by high mountain ranges including the Uinta Basin in Utah, the Peons Creek Basin in western Colorado, and the Washakie Basin of southern Wyoming, and the Great Divide Basin and Greater Green River Basins and fossil basin of southwest Wyoming. Now each basin preserves sediments of these lakes that existed during the Eocene. These lakes were often flooding back and forth across the landscape, leaving behind a record today of animals and plants that fell into these shallow lakes. The Green River Formation is most famous for its incredible fossil fish, including the state fossil of Wyoming Nydia, which is a, a little fish that's related to modern sardines. These fish lived in large schools and likely died in mass during periods of temperature and chemical changes in the lake systems. They're very common as fossils and they likely form these giant schools of fish numbering in the millions. And they provided food for other fish known from the formation as well as a diverse shorebird fauna. Today we're going to talk about the fossil plants from the Green River Formation and use that information to reconstruct what Eastern Utah may have looked like 50 million years ago. Now the first and likely most characteristic fossil leaf of the Green River Formation is the fossil McGuinei. It's very characteristic with its multi-pronged leaf margins. McGuinei was named after the American paleontologist Henry McGuinney, uh, shown here collecting uh, fossil leaves. McGuinei is related to the American sycamore tree, which today only lives in the eastern United States. The occurrence of this 
of this relative throughout the western part of North America during the Eocene indicates a, a much warmer and more temperate climate during the Eocene for Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. One of the most common fossil leaves in the Green River Formation is, is Populus wilmati. Uh, with a very characteristic leaf. And I've actually found a few of these specimens myself splitting shale. Populus is a very speciose plant with a number of living species, including both the cottonwood and aspen trees native to Utah. It's likely that this Eocene species was more similar to some of the living poplars um, and common along the banks of this lake system. Another fairly common fossil plant is a variety of fossil legumes, likely members of the family Fabricia. This is the group that includes peas and beans and lentils, and it's likely a source uh, for food for the diverse birds and mammals known from the Green River Formation as well. Now, this is not a fern. It's an unidentified legume. And many legumes have multiple leaves like this uh, very cool specimen here. True ferns are also known from the Green River Formation, but are rare, and their appearance indicates a wet and warm climate. Now, legumes are interesting because they serve as an important food source for the mammals living at that time. And during the Green River Formation's deposition, there were numerous species of primates here in North America, lemur-like primates and nocturnal tarsier-like primates, which likely relied on these food sources, or the insects at least, that fed on these plants. Now, being close to a large lake system, there are many water plants such as the locust plant, which is distantly related to water lilies. It's placed in the U dicots, but it's found in ponds and lakes in tropical regions today, like Southeast Asia. Cactails have been found, as well as horsetails, equisetum, both found in wetlands today and are found in the Green River Formation as well. Another remarkable fossil is the large leaves of Coleusia. This is the elephant ear plant, which is native to southeastern Asia. Now, today it's an invasive plant in Florida, where it grows in the warm, tropical, wet climate of that state. The presence of the fossil in Utah and Wyoming harks to a really wet and tropical past in the Eocene for Utah and Wyoming. Another fossil is Sutleus. This is the hackleberry tree, which is found in many Eocene sites in the Rocky Mountains. It's a smaller tree with serrated leaves and smaller seeds that easily preserve as fossils. They grow to get today in Utah and are often found, uh, often found in urban settings where they're planted um, because they're drought tolerant. And it's rather rare actually in the Green River Formation to find these, but it's more common in some of the upland environments during the Eocene. One of the most common fossil leaves in the Green River Formation is the genus Pat Platycaria. Now today it lives in Asia, in particular in China, Korea, and Japan. It's a member of the walnut family, and it has these long female catkins. These are bundles of flowers, and the seeds are spiky cone-like structures, which are often mistaken as conifer pine cones. The next common fossil leaf in the Green River Formation is Rudeus nicarius, which is sumac. Now they have these toothed slender leaves, and, and I found a number of these as well in the Green River Formation. Now today, sumac uh, grows in Utah, and in fact there's a number of sumac that live along the canals and creeks and the foothills of the Uinta Mountains here in Vernal. The leaves show these fantastic uh, bright colors in the autumn. The Green River fossil uh, fossils are placed in a separate species, but the genus is a pretty speciose plant, and the, they're species that are known to grow throughout North America, Asia, and Europe. Fossil flowers are known of the genus Astrodium, which is a member of the cashew trees. It's native to Central and South America, with many species living in Brazil. The presence in Utah and Wyoming demonstrates a, a much warmer environment during the Eocene. In fact, there's a number of invertebrates and other plants today that are restricted to Central and South America, but during the Eocene, they had ranges all the way up into northern Wyoming. Most striking in terms of how warm it was during the Eocene is the discovery of fossil palm fronds placed in the genus Scabalides. Now, palms only grow today in places which rarely get below freezing temperatures, and the presence of palm fronds in Wyoming during the Eocene uh, strongly indicates that it was much, much warmer and wetter environment during the Middle Eocene. 
Now, date palms have also been reported from the Green River Formation, which today grow in Southeast Asia. Sabates is closely related to Washingtonia, which is a native plant tree in the southwestern United States. It grows today mostly in California, Arizona, and can be found growing in southern Utah. It's fairly tolerant of cold temperatures, but it does not grow in Colorado, northern Utah, or Wyoming today. And during the Eocene, its range expanded north into Wyoming, although these fossils are placed in a different genus. Lance Grandy's 1984 book lists uh, 78 species of fossil plants from the Green River Formation, including ferns, spleeworts, pines, redwoods, cottontails, burrweed, willow, wingnut, ivory, kiki trees, grapes, moon seeds, roses, hop trees, tree of heaven, sumacs, bald cypress, maples, hibiscus, soapberry and golden rain trees and guava. So we have a really diverse flora uh, from the Green River Formation, which is continually being expanded with new discoveries. So what was the forest like during the time of the Green River Formation? Most paleontologists reconstruct the forest of eastern Utah, Wyoming, and western Colorado as a mesophilic forest, something like what we find in Alabama today, or even Florida. It was likely a dense forest with many large hardwood trees and a mix of conifer and some pine, uh, palms actually growing. So let's take a look at some of the reconstructions made of the Eocene here in Utah, which was also a time period of many strange mammals like the multi-horned and saber-toothed Uinithiers, um, early horses like Orohippus and, and Protohippus, and the oldest bats, and a unique fossil birds and turtles and crocodilians, as well as numerous fossil fish. This is another older reconstruction of the Eocene highlighting those palm trees. This is another reconstruction um, from the Natural History Museum of London of the Green River Formation during the Eocene period with that big lake in the background. And here's a reconstruction from the uh, Smithsonian Institute, Washington, DC. Now, comparing the environment of the mesophilic forest today with uh, with the modern northeastern Utah and it's, it's really just striking how much the environment has changed during the last 50 million years. Now there are many fossil sites in the Eocene that preserve fossil plants from around the world and it's really interesting to get a global perspective on the Middle Eocene biomes if we compare these sites. One of the most compelling things is how diverse the flora is during the Eocene. Even at high latitudes near the poles, we see high diversity of plant life. So Utah was not alone in how warm it was. Reconstructing the Earth's biomes during the Eocene shows that North America was covered in thick rainforests to the south, mesophilic forests to the north, with temperate mixed needle forests near the North Pole. Hence, it was as if the flora was shifting northward and, and much wetter and more temperate than today. The world was covered in a thick layer of forests and supported extremely diverse fauna of animals, unlike anything that we observe today. Much of the diversity of plant life was brought about during the Cretaceous with that dramatic rise of the angiosperms, the flowering plants, so that these forests were dominated by flowering trees and shrubs and other plants belonging to this new group of plants. Not since the Pennsylvanian had Earth seen such floral diversity. These late Cretaceous and Eocene forests form a second pulse of coal-bearing units, and much of the coal in the western part of the United States comes from the dense flora that once lived during the late Cretaceous and up to the Eocene. With the later cool down near the Oligocene, we then see a drop in the diversity of plants and the subsequent ice ages in the Cenozoic, dramatically shifting the climate and resulting in the widespread appearance of grasslands and alpine tundra, as well as the sagebrush landscape of Wyoming and northeastern Utah and Colorado that exist today. One of the best places to see the Green River Formation fossils on display is at Kremer, Wyoming at the Fossil Butte National Monument which is, has the best display of fossils from the Green River Formation. Another fantastic display of Green River fossils uh, and plants can be found at the Utah 
Field House of Natural History State Museum here in Vernal, Utah, which has a wall of fossil plants uh, from Utah on display. I also highly recommend the book by Lance Grandy, The Lost World of Fossil Lake Snapshots of Deep Time, published in 2013. It's filled with really great images, including some that I've used in this lecture, and goes into much more detail about the fossils, in particular from Fossil Lake near Fossil Butte, Wyoming. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn how you too can take a geology class at Utah State University, visit geology.usu.edu. And if you're interested in who I am and the research that I, view, that I do, visit my website at benjaminslashburger.org. Thanks for watching.